for modern armies, the guided anti-tank missiles are not just an anti-tank weapon, but a multi-purpose guided artillery shell. The Milan is the system that played the most important role in this transformation. For almost half a century, it has been the nightmare of tanks and the reliable companion of the infantry. Now we're investigating the Milan, a true guided anti-tank missile legend. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start. Indeed, the Milan is an important system that transformed the concept of using guided anti-tank missiles. However, when its design began in 1962, no one foresaw that it would be such a revolutionary weapon. In those years, NATO's military planners had to figure out how to defend a 900 km long front from the coast of the Baltic Sea to Austria. The Warsaw Pact, which already has numerical superiority, would turn into an unstoppable flood of steel against NATO troops spreading across a wide front if it was the first to attack. In order to solve this problem, placing infantry units equipped with guided anti-tank missiles on the front lines seemed the most effective solution. These soldiers would intercept or at least slow down the attack of enemy's armored units. Then NATO armored units coming from behind would launch a counterattack. That was the plan. However, the first generation guided anti-tank missiles were bulky and insufficient for this task. The Milan began to be designed as a system that would give infantrymen waiting to meet tanks on the front lines a higher chance of fighting. Germany and France had brought together all their knowledge in this field for the project. However, as the USSR started to put new and superior tanks, such as the T-64, into service, the requirements changed and the development process was prolonged. So the Milan became operational only in 1972. Milan means kite the bird in German and French. However, its name actually derived from the French Missile d'Infanterie Léger anti shell meaning infantry light anti-tank missile. The Milan immediately started to replace the first generation systems used by the Western Bloc in these years like the Cobra, ENTAC and the Bantam. Compared to its predecessor, the system had much higher hit rate, reliability and armor piercing capability. Now, NATO infantry had a real chance against the tanks of the communist bloc. The missile of the system is put into disposable tubes. This design allows to decrease reload time and increase transportability. A typical Milan team consists of three-man crew. First man carries tripod, the second firing unit, and the last one the tubes. The Milan becomes ready to fire within three minutes. After pressing the firing button, the missile launches from the tube and the tube ejects to the rear. After the missile leaves the tube, the fins on it open. In a safe distance, the missile ignites the sustainer rocket engine. The Milan has semi-automatic command line of sight guidance system. The sighting device calculates the angular difference in direction from the missile position to the target location. It is then given electronic instructions via wire to the missile that corrects its flight path so that it would fly along a straight line from the sighting device to the target. Thanks to the wire guidance system, the Milan cannot be affected by radio jamming. Depending on the model, the missile is tracked either by a tail-mounted infrared lamp or an electronic flash lamp. Until the missile reaches the target, the gunner must stay in place and control it. This period can be extended up to 18 seconds at the maximum range. In general use, no more than two launches are made from the same position. Also, two teams are deployed simultaneously in a standard anti-tank mission. When the first team changes its position, 
the second team provides protection for it. The first generations of the Milan missiles had thorium at the tail section to produce the infrared signature which is used for tracking it. This brought the risk of radiation emission. The use of thorium in the missiles manufactured after 1999 was abandoned. The Milan was preferred by nearly 40 countries. Also, many guerrilla groups and militia forces have been using this system. The Milan was produced by India, Spain and the UK under license. The missiles fired from the Milan system show different characteristics depending on the model. The first two versions are the most widely used ones and their length is 0.77 meters and the wingspan is 0.27 meters. The missile diameter of the Milan one is 103 millimeters. The diameter of the others is 115 millimeters. While the Milan one missile weighs 16.7 kilograms, the missile weight of the Milan II and Milan ER is 12 kilograms. The total system weight is 16.7, 28 and 21 kilograms for these three models respectively. Approaching its target with a speed of 200 meters per second, the maximum effective range of the missile is 2000 meters. The Milan ER model can reach the range of 3000 meters. Depending on the models, the Milan can pierce steel armor between 650 and 1000 mm thick. There is also a version called the Milan 2T with tandem warhead effective against the explosive reactive armor. Although originally developed for infantry use, many countries have mounted the Milan on the vehicles. The British Army even used a special armored anti-tank guided missile vehicle model called the FV-120 Spartan MCT. German Martyr armored infantry fighting vehicles were occasionally equipped with the Milan depending on the mission definition. It is still possible to see the system on many BBLs. Cyprus continues to use EE-3 Jararaka 4x4 armored wheeled vehicles with the Milan. The Milan has a lot of success on the battlefield. Let's take a look at some of these. The first recorded combat use of the Milan took place on June 6, 1976. At the time, when Lebanon was experiencing a civil war, the Syrian army entered Beirut to intervene. During this intervention, some Lebanese units managed to knock several Syrian T-55s and T-62s out by using the Milan. Also, Lebanese flanges used the system against sniper positions in buildings along the Green Line. Similarly, the Syrian army launched the Milan against Christian fortifications in Mount Lebanon. These were the first examples which show Milan is not only an anti-tank weapon, but also portable infantry guided artillery system. Yet, what happened in Lebanon remained an exception and didn't transform the concept of use of guided anti-tank missiles in the West. The real transformation took place after 1982. During the Falklands War, necessities forced British soldiers to find out-of-the-box solutions. Artillery support was vital against the Argentine units deployed in the pillboxes and mountain caves. But the British forces couldn't properly position the 30 105mm L118 guns on the wet ground of the island. They needed helicopters to redeploy. However, the Atlantic conveyor was sunk on May 25, 1982 with the Chinooks which were of great importance for the operation. For this reason, the L118s were slow to follow the British land operations. So, the British troops started using their Milans as portable infantry artillery system with high hit rate. During the war, the Argentine snipers had modern US rifles which has an effective range of 800 meters. However, the British snipers still used Model 82 which has an effective range of only 400 meters. So, the British forces started to fire the Milan against the Argentine sniper positions from a distance of 2000 meters. 
after the Falklands War, all armies of the world accepted the guided anti-tank missiles as the personal guided artillery support system of the infantry. Among the weapons given by the USA to the Mujahideen who resisted the Soviet invasion in Afghanistan in the 1980s was the Milan, which was easy to use and transport but highly effective. An important use of the Milan also took place in Africa in the 1980s. Libya, which had been directly involved in the civil war in Chad since 1978, had a big and powerful army. However, the French-backed Chad troops managed to prevail by using a new tactic in this conflict called the Toyota War. According to the new tactic, one of the Chadian Toyota convoy was rapidly rotating around the Libyan armored units. The turrets of the tanks and armored vehicles couldn't track these high-speed pickups. Although the 14.5mm and 23mm guns mounted on the Toyotas were ineffective against tanks, Libyan soldiers, who were constantly under fire, were panicking in the face of the enemy that they couldn't neutralize. But the real disaster for them started at this very moment when the second Toyota group equipped with the Milan was launching its offensive from 2000 meters. By using this tactic, the Chadian troops captured the heavily guarded Wadi Doom airbase in 1986. In 1987, at the Battle of Fada, they also managed to knock nearly 100 Libyan tanks and more than 30 armored vehicles out. This was an astonishing victory for the Chadian troops, which lost only 18 soldiers and 3 vehicles. In the same year, during another raid, Chadian troops destroyed more than 60 Libyan T-55 and T-62s by using the Milan. During the Iran-Iraq war, Iraqi troops frequently used the Milan against Iranian tanks as well as machine gun nests, entrenched positions and bunkers. Some sources claim that two low-flying Iranian AH-1 Cobra helicopters were also shot down by the Milan. Many people think that the most effective missile system used against Iraqi Scott tactical ballistic missiles during the 1991 Gulf War was the high-tech and expensive Patriot. However, there was a simpler and more cost-effective system for this task, the Milan. In the early stages of the war, the EA Joint Stars aircraft were used to detect Saddam's mobile Scott batteries. Yet, this method was not very efficient. First of all, it was too hard to locate mobile launchers spread throughout the vast desert in western Iraq. Also, the infrared sensors of the E-8 were able to detect the heat signature after the firing of Scuds. So, the US and British Special Forces crossed the border to locate mobile launchers. Especially the SIS units driving Land Rovers were particularly successful to acquire many targets. At first, these units were sending the coordinates of the target that they had detected to the Tactical Operation Command Center, avoiding engagement. Iraqi Scuds were being destroyed by airstrikes. However, in some cases, it took 50 minutes for the combat aircraft to reach the area. For this reason, SAS commandos, using the opportunity they seized, began attacking mobile batteries with their Milans mounted on their Land Rovers without waiting for an airstrike. The result was quite satisfactory. By ambushes and hit and run attacks, the British managed to destroy many Scott batteries. Of course, the Milan successfully performed its primary anti-tank mission in the 1991 Gulf War. The French used this missile to destroy at least six Iraqi T-55s. The Milan proved itself in the Bosnian War as well. The garrison of the French contingent stationed in this country had constantly been harassed by the Serbian M84 tanks. On September 2, 1995, the French decided to use the Milan to put an end to this harassment. The Serbian tank at a distance of 1870 meters was destroyed. 
The explosion caused the M84's turret to be blown off the hull and into the air. After that, the Serbs never came closer than 2000 meters to any units equipped with the Milan. Some sources claim that in 2016, two Turkish M60 tanks were destroyed in Syria by the Milan fired by Kurdish forces. However, the missiles used in this incident are more likely to be the Cornet E. During the 2017 Iraqi Kurdish conflict, the Peshmerga destroyed an Iraqi M1 Abram tank and several Humvees using the Milan. For nearly half a century, the Milan has been writing its own saga. Although today it has begun to be replaced with the new generation of guided anti tank missiles, it is still one of the most reliable companions of infantry and one of the worst nightmares of tanks. Many armies are not considering giving up on it yet. The Milan, which deserves to be a true legend with both its successes and its important role in changing the concepts, seems to add new pages to its own saga for a while. Thanks for watching our new video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.